Hey, I'm Chris F from Make Everything, and today we are going to be talking about grinding discs, but not four or five inch grinding discs like you see in my hand, little grinding discs that go on a die grinder to get into tight places. Check it out. All right, so if you're familiar with metalworking, especially if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen a type of disc for your angle grinder like this. This is called a flap disc. Basically what you've got is you've got layered pieces of sandpaper on a backing, and these can remove metal, you can get them for aluminum, stainless, you can even use them on wood. And these are great, they go on, like I said, a regular angle grinder, but they have their limitations because as you can see, they're pretty big. This is a four and a half inch disc, they make them in five inch and a bunch of other sizes. What we've got here is basically the same thing, but in a much smaller package. So this is what's called a combi click disc, um, or a little more common of an industry phrase is a Rolock style disc. So what we've got here is a plastic arbor with a female thread in it, and then you've got a male thread on the back of the disc, and it's a very short kind of angled thread that in basically a quarter turn locks in and you're good to go. What's nice about a system like this is that you have a ton of different style discs all with the same backing and they lock in and you don't have to deal with any wrenches, loosening the arbor nut or anything like that. So it's a very good way to kind of quickly move through different styles of discs. You know, you've got paint stripping discs, you've got flap discs, you've got flat grinding discs, We've got surface conditioning discs, all sorts of stuff. Um, the other benefit to a system like this is just the, the size of it and its ability to get into tight places. You know, when you're using an angle grinder, even just holding the grinder can be a little difficult. Die grinders run generally a little bit slower. Um, this style has a variable speed setting on the back, but you get a lot more control out of a smaller tool like this than you will with an angle grinder. Another option for a combi click disc like this is something like this proprietary kind of angle grinder from Faird that has an arbor on it that specifically is made to hold the arbor of these discs. So this is a kind of direct attachment where we can run this tool like an angle grinder uh, without having to use a die grinder, also variable speed, and can still get into tight places because you've got that extension over on the shaft. Now I typically use these on a battery powered setup, but you can easily hook them up to a pneumatic die grinder, which a lot of shops are a little more familiar with, and it's the same system. And what's really nice about this is even if you want to switch tools, as long as you have multiple of these arbors, you can very easily just switch your consumable and kind of run and gun through it. You know, obviously a smaller consumable is going to wear out faster than a larger consumable, so you want to keep that in mind. And it also kind of lends itself to this sort of quick on and off that you get with that you know, short thread. Now something that I have noticed a lot of people are not familiar with is the larger version of this, which is essentially a three inch uh, combi click. And this one is a actually kind of the opposite in terms of the way it engages with the tool. You've got a male thread on the end of this die grinder, same quarter inch shaft, and you've got a polyfan disc, a uh, three inch disc with a female thread in it. Now this just threads on there, and this thing just will do a little bit more work um, because it's got a larger surface area and you can you know, still get into some tighter places and just be a little bit more nimble than a four and a half inch flap disc. So I'm gonna use these discs on a couple of examples. I've got some angle here and there's some uh, bar over there. And this is stuff that I kind of pulled out of the scrap bin from people kind of learning how to weld angle in my shop. And one of the things that comes up if you ever weld angle is this sort of inside corner weld and how do you get to it? Now, one of the reasons that you would use one of these smaller two inch or three inch discs is because if we take a four and a half inch disc and we try to get it into that corner, we're not going to get as close to the outside corner as we will with a smaller disc. I mean, you can just see it simply right here, look how close that gets into the corner, and then look at the difference when I go to use a four and a half inch disc. So the amount that I can get into the corner of the actual material between a four and a half inch disc and a two inch disc is enough that this job will run a lot more efficiently if I have to grind out inside corners with one of these consumables. Same thing goes if you obviously have a smaller 
piece of angle. Um, you're just going to have a more focused grinding area, and you're going to be really able to get into corners um, and run around material that much faster and more efficiently versus if we were using this big disc on this very small and kind of delicate material. So I'm going to show you how some of these discs work in these applications, and I'll run through some of the properties that I've got here on the table. So on my die grinder right now, I've got a Victo grain disc. Now, if you watched my other video about the Victo grain product line, you know that these things absolutely shred through metal. So in an instance like this, where I've got a pretty proud weld here that was probably a little too cold, I want to remove that material as quickly as possible. Now look how efficiently I can remove that using this little grinder. So this doesn't leave a very smooth finish because it's really not that type of wheel. But like I said, with this arbor, I can basically just screw this off and I can put on a flap disc to get a little bit more of a refined finish if that's what I'm going for. Now I'm left with a really smooth finish on this inside corner and I had no problem getting into it because I just have so much more room to work when I'm using a disc that actually fits inside that corner. Now you can imagine even a smaller piece of angle, having a smaller grinding wheel on my die grinder is gonna just make it that much more efficient for me to get in there. Nice and smooth interior corner and a finish that I would not be able to get if I was trying to do it with a four and a half inch disc. I wouldn't even get close. So now another instance for using a die grinder with a two inch disc, a combi click disc, uh, is you know in an application like this. So this is a practice cube. Uh, this is something that you would make in like a welding class. And a lot of times when you build these things, uh, you don't weld your inside corners just because in a welding class, it's very hard to dress them and beginner welders usually screw them up. But what you're wind up with is these little kind of swells on the corners because most beginners will weld out and then it'll kind of bulge up over there. Now to get in there with an angle grinder can be really tricky because you're trying to grind this very fine little corner um, and being able to be a little more nimble with a smaller grinder and a smaller disc can really help you kind of get in and refine those corners. So having the ability to kind of really, really well control the corner of this disc allows me to get into an area where you really just couldn't get if you had just a four and a half inch uh, angle grinder and a disc on there. I mean, you're, the way you'd have to angle the grinder wouldn't really allow you to get into some of these corners, but having this smaller, more nimble application uh, really is gonna help. Now, one of the things I wanna stress with these is that while they are smaller, they're really no slouch to remove the material. So I'm gonna show you just a traditional kind of one inch tube corner that I'll just grind out completely with this little grinder because while you want to have a four and a half inch grinder around, if you're in an application where you only have one of these and you have maybe something where you, you know, you're going to be doing a lot of small intricate work, you can get a lot of work done with these even though they are on the smaller side. We're going to go back to the Victo grain for this, at least for the rough grind. And now we'll switch over back to a polyfan flap disc. We'll finish everything up with a nice smooth grind. All right, so that's a pretty well ground and blended corner on a piece of one by one tube, a little bit of work 
on that inside corner as well. Um, and what's nice is that, you know, all that was done with just one tool. So now aside from just sort of grinding out a corner, you can also use different um, types of discs when you're using this backer pad and arbor, you know, with this kind of twist lock system, the combi click. So this one is a paint and rust removal disc, which I did a whole video about these, but I'll show you a kind of a quick blip of how they can kind of blast rust off. And what I like about these, especially if you're doing restoration work, these can get into tight to reach places. And because they're so thick, they'll almost sort of conform to the space that you need by kind of mushing them in uh, when you're grinding. So a quick and easy way to remove rust and paint, especially if you're prepping uh, for a weld. One of the other things that I really like about this system is that I can put a surface finishing disc on it. So what I'll do is I'm gonna show you how I bring this corner up almost to like close to a polish. Um, now, after I use that polyfan disc, I can use a surface conditioning disc like this, and I can bring these grind marks out and just refine them a little bit more, and then use a unitizing disc to get really close to a polish. And now this right here is a unitizing disc, which uh, you may recognize from my last video of uh, polishing, where I polished a piece of stainless, but we'll use this on this mild steel and really bring this corner up nice. Now you can see I didn't put any polishing compound on this, but I did bring it up to a nice finish. Now that being said, if you did want to polish a piece of metal and you couldn't get a big polisher or buffer in there, you can also get felt polishing pads for this same system. So it really is a way to sort of get yourself through all the steps at a smaller scale while also being a lot more agile and able to get into tighter spaces. So you can see that is a mirror polished mild steel corner all done with a tiny little two inch die grinder. So as you can imagine, there are a ton of applications where you can use discs like this and arbors and grinders like this to get into tight locations and just do a lot of different styles of metal finishing and metal grinding that you wouldn't normally be able to do with a regular angle grinder. Um, you know, a disc like this is great, but there are gonna be moments in metalworking where you're gonna need to get into a tighter spot and something like these are really gonna do it for you. Now there's a ton of options when it comes to the different styles, the grits, the sizes, all those different things. And one of the things I really like, as I've talked about before with some of the fared stuff, is there's already sort of a variety pack that you can go ahead and get, which is gonna have a bunch of those different things already in it. So there's two kits that I have here. One is the mirror finish kit and one is the prep to paint kit. Now the mirror finish kit, I've actually done a video on a couple of years ago, and it comes with a bunch of different discs, as you can see, that kind of bring you up through the motions from a raw material, up to a mirror polish. And what's nice about it is that you can take that kit and then decide, oh, I wanna buy a box of Victor Grain grinding discs or a box of uh, polyfan flap discs or whatever it is that you might come up with. Um, a similar system to this is the reverse side grinding disc, which you might remember from a video from a couple months ago. This is essentially the same exact thing, but with a much smaller arbor and the grit on this disc is completely on the backside so you can get into tight places. All right, so that about does it for this video. Um, these are a really versatile thing to have in your shop and you can buy the arbors really cheap, have them on a couple of different die grinders and you can get yourself a little assortment of consumables and they will 100% come into play on your next project. Um, if you work in anything automotive, something like this can be so, so good to have if you just can't get an angle grinder into a car chassis or inside of a car um, to grind away or you know, sort of remove a bung or paint if you have to weld. Something like this is really gonna help you 
with that. Going into a larger size like the three inch has been really great for me. I find that I use this three inch one all the time. And yes, this is a cordless Ryobi die grinder. Um, I've really enjoyed using this. I get a ton of questions about it on my Instagram. So I'll tell you here on YouTube, uh, this thing has been great. It's 18 volts, variable speed. It works awesome. I use it on the Banshee a lot uh, when I was building that and it, it's, it's worked out great. Now, if you don't have any of these cool battery powered tools, you can 100% use them on an inexpensive pneumatic grinder, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure your compressor can keep up. Now, one of the questions that I get all the time when I show sort of die grinder based stuff with this quarter inch shank is, can I use it in a drill? Now, the answer is yes, you can use it in a drill, but it's not gonna work like this. You know, these grinders are running uh, between 10 and 25,000 RPM. Your drill is not even gonna get close to that. So they're gonna grind material away, 100%. You're gonna be able to move material with this um, disc on your you know, regular cordless drill or a plug-in drill, but the speed at which it's traveling is just so much further below the intended use, it's really just not gonna be efficient. Now, in a pinch, I've totally done it, especially with wire wheels and some of these paint stripping discs. If I don't want to kick up a bunch of dust, I'll chuck this up into my drill and I'll just use it at a much slower speed to kind of just reduce the amount of particles I put in the air. That being said, you know, your results may vary. So if I could suggest something, I'd say get something like this and get yourself either uh, one of these pneumatic grinders or just go ahead and buy yourself a plug-in die grinder, either a 90 degree one or a straight grinder because it's something that you will not regret owning and you will 100% use. So if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more videos like this, going over tools and different things that I found to help my workflow here in the shop, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below. If you wanna see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, check me out on Instagram right here, at Make Everything Shop. Um, I've had really good luck using the Ferret products and they do supply my shop with consumables and it's been a huge eye-opening experience for me to work with them over the last couple of years and learn about the difference between inexpensive consumables that don't last and a little more expensive consumables that make my job and my life so much easier. So I encourage you to check out the Ferret products, check out the Ferret tool catalog, which for me is a huge source of inspiration as to what stuff I might try to use next. But either way, get yourself a combi click system, a Rolox style system like this, and you'll be able to at least experience it on your next project. And I really do think that it will be helpful. If you wanna see more videos like this stuff, please leave a comment about it down below. I enjoy making these sort of tool tip videos because because for me, I didn't have anybody to teach me about this stuff when I was learning. I learned by complete trial and error, you know, for the most part with all these different things, I'm self-taught by experience. And typically that was like trial by fire where I took on jobs that I had no idea how I was going to do. And then I figured it out. You know, many years later, I've got a business and I have customers and people that rely on me and, you know, it's worked out really well. So I want to share that knowledge with people um, that want to learn it and I want to get people's hands dirty and get them into the shop. So again, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Chris Zepp for Make Everything. Stay tuned for the next video and the next great project and I hope to see you there. Thanks.